document, draw a circle with the ellipse tool. Select the mesh tool, shortcut M, from the toolbox. You'll find it under the interactive fill tool. And start double clicking around the circle, adding nodes. Apply color as you see fit in the property bar to get a feel for adding nodes within an object. You can change node colors within the property bar, as well as transparency and the smoothness of the curves being created within the mesh. Select nodes and move them around a bit. This should give you a feel for eventually rendering an object. You're adding nodes, adjusting their positions, and adding color to them in order to shade or highlight an area. Delete the added nodes, and let's start anew with our circle. This time we'll focus on rendering it into a simple sphere. My fill color is blue. Starting on the upper right, add a node and apply a lighter blue to it in the property bar. Adjust it slightly so it's in the upper right of the circle. Then, when holding down Shift, select some of the lower left edge nodes. We're going to apply a darker color to these to add a simple shadow. Choose one of the dark blues from the property bar. Continue adding nodes on the lower edge of the circle as you see fit, and notice how dimension is easily added to a shape with a simple mesh. Now we'll add some additional nodes in the lower half of the circle to lighten up some of the area and add some core shadows. Make sure you've got a cross section going versus a node being added on a single line. This will give you a more even color distribution versus creating a thick, obvious line within the object. Also note that wildly manipulated handles have an adverse effect on rendering your sphere. Instead, I want to add a lighter color to the lower right, above the edge. Too light and it competes with the highlight. Too dark and it competes with the shadow. Choose the base blue you started the circle with and deselect your object to get a feel for how the rendering is going. Currently, my lower right node is too angular for my liking. To fix this, you can adjust your node angles or add additional nodes of more gradual color changes. I've done this quickly by increasing the grid size in the property bar. Careful on how high you hit those numbers, however, as more nodes mean larger file sizes. More nodes also mean more chances to add color and render your object, though. So how many you ultimately need is up to you. Choose lighter colors to add more of a highlight hotspot to the upper right. Once again, I'm selecting the lower edge nodes of my object while holding down Shift and applying a darker hue to them to add a deeper shadow. Because my highlight is in the upper right, I'm concentrating shadows on the left and bottom portions of my sphere. Deselect and check out your mesh render once again. Without the nodes in your way, you can more easily assess whether or not your rendering is successful versus needing more work. Mine definitely needs more work. I'm going to smooth things out a bit by deleting some nodes, moving others, and changing their colors. I want color transitions to be smooth overall, but I also want this to be a simple introduction to using the mesh tool, versus us spending hours creating the perfect sphere. I definitely encourage taking more time than this brief lesson, and creating a plethora of objects so you can get a feel for different shape styles and what it takes to create a fully rendered illustration.